Yo, what is up guys? It's your boy, this guy, you know who it is, back again. We're back, we're back and better than ever. It's the new incarnation, the brand new show. Oh, oh, you're gonna fucking enjoy it. It's completely different from anything you've seen before, I swear. It's all new, all brand, all not being seen or done before, brand new. Stick around, we've got, there's gonna be art, drawing, all kinds of shit, you might even learn something. We might have a special guest, holy fuck. I don't believe it. I don't even, I'm not even close to believing it. I don't believe anything, I don't believe in any of it. It's all lies, lies. But it's new lies, not just the old lies. Fucking new lies for you, for you. I do this for you because I fucking love you. I love you so fucking much. I love you even more than fucking minions. I fucking love minions. So fucking, like I said, stick around and enjoy the show. Get a cup of tea. Have a fucking biscuit. Get a snack, a Snickers bar. Sit down, enjoy. Fucking enjoy it. Enjoy all the free content I make for you, you shits. My friends, I like you all. Enjoy the show. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Ooh. Ooh. I just had horrible flashbacks from church. Ooh. Ooh, yucky. And that was a song. A hymn. A hymn. I never understood the, understood the word. Hymn. Hymn. Um... Welcome, welcome, Sabbath morning, now we rest from every care. Welcome, welcome, is thy dawning, holy Sabbath day of prayer. No, it is, it's fun, it is, it's good, it is, it's fun, it is. It's gay priests. Um, that actually legitimately brought back horrible, horrible memories. Fuck. Oh, what a brilliant way to start the show. Um, well, at least we're drawing a nude bitch. A fuck it, some fucking bitch. Some fucking nude goddamn whore. Um, to, you know, balance out all the, the apparent Christianity we opened the show. Bloody brilliant. For all of my rallying against fucking rallying. For all of my sitting alone in my room, talking into my phone about fucking religion's gay. Why don't they just fuck off? Stupid prick. Um, well, there, there I go fucking starting my brandy brand new podcast series with a, a Christian hymn. Well, I feel fucking stupid, sheepish, foolish, an ass. I feel like an ass. Oh, I could feel an ass right now. We love a good ass. Oh, we love a good ass, don't we, lads? Oh, go on, son. Yes. Um. Well, well, actually, uh, one thing I I forgot to mention when I did my thorough review of um. Kong versus Godzilla, or. Dong versus Cockzilla. Um, King Dong versus massive Cockzilla. That's what they call me. They call me Cockzilla because I'm a massive cock. Um, the I was the fight. The end song. Have you watched it? If you've watched it, you know. I think it's the Hollies. Sometimes all I need is the air that I breathe and to love you. All I need is the air that I breathe. For one, that was a horribly out of place song. In my opinion, I get that they were having like an uplift, not uplifting, but like a, a lighter tone to the end of the film. There was Kong jumping around the fucking hollow earth or whatever it was. Um, I, I, maybe there was a, a creative decision, like reasoning for having that song, but for one thing, it is out of place. Also, it's a shit song. Also, uh, you know, I don't say this often, but I was genuinely, like actually, actually triggered 
by that, like it actually tri- triggered trauma sort of memories and put me in a bad place. <laughs> like that legitimately happened. At the end of Kong versus Godzilla, I was actually triggered um, and had to like take a moment to be like, ooh, fuck. <laughs> because um, that was a, a, a band and song that my mother very much enjoyed uh, listening to, you know, at home, just whenever, whatever. God, I'm, I'm really fucking up this fucking... I can't draw faces. That's what I always say. Uh, draw bodies and it's fine. And if you fuck up a body, it's whatever, because it's just a body. It doesn't matter. It's going to look fine regardless. But if you fuck up the face, it looks like you fucked up the face and it ruins the entire drawing. So now I'm fucking PO'd. I'm piss offed. Um, I think I just did it too big, maybe. Oh, Christ. Christ on a fucking Christ stick. Um, but yeah, my mum would often play that song because she liked it. And that song happened to be playing in the kitchen while I was uh, suffering a, a, a kind of abuse <laughs> of one form or another that I won't go into right here right now. Um, and and that I, I didn't realise that was a trigger for me. But now I know that fucking song and probably that band as a whole, their whole fucking discography is probably fucking triggering for me, which is less than cool, frankly. You know, obviously I play out my my sort of hard, hard boy gangster kind of persona. Everyone's aware of that. Ewan's pretty fucking gangster in general. Uh, but, uh, you know, evidently I get triggered by a fucking song at the end of a film. I'm really fucking up this f- fucking face. Why can't I draw all of A the sudden? Oh, I feel horrible now. Um, oh, that'll have to do. Maybe if I make the, oh, the arm should be big. The arm should be up here. Oh, I wanted to do this like so quick, just jump into it and then I'm going to use a highlighter for the skin and then use a black ballpoint for the fucking... Oh, shit it. The neck should be longer. Oh, I didn't even want it to be perfect, like, fucking proportions and shit. I wanted it to be kind of like, not abstract, but you know, maybe a little bit abstract. Just a cool sort of double page spread in my sketchbook of a big nude of a of a girl, a woman, or f- feminine, feminine, female, a fembot, a a a women, women, W Y M X N. I don't know. Give a shit. <laughs> I get triggered by dumb songs that I hear at the end of movies. What do you get triggered by? Leave a comment below and tell me your triggers so I can be sure to include them <laughs> in future fucking... I'm going to get that now, aren't I? People are going to send me... They're going to find the song and they're going to send me YouTube links to it on on Instagram. You know, I get sent like videos every now and again being like, oh, you and you'll love this. And it's like a bum or a zombie or, you know, some some shit, some gay shit. Two people gaying off with each other, being gay, getting gay with each other in a really gay way because I like gay stuff. Um, now I'm going to get people linking me to that song. Um, I probably won't. That probably won't happen. I'm making that up. But, and you know, if it does happen, the person's getting blocked <laughs> within within seconds because they're only doing it because they know it's a trigger. And they'll be like, oh, you triggered you. Oh, you triggered you. And I never gave a shit about, like, the whole trigger thing. Not not that I didn't give a shit, but, you know, all the comedians go like, oh, you can't say anything nowadays, everyone's so triggered. Oh, I try to tell a fucking racist or homophobic joke in a comedy club and everyone groans at me instead of laughing. Ooh. Maybe you're just not funny. Um, I did, I had a, another 
another rant that I could go on about um, how I'm just, I'm so fucking, I'm done with like comedy podcasts. I'm sure there are some out there that are good, but the the few I check out, and I, I, I mean this in the nicest way possible, just don't recommend me stuff because I won't. Like, I, I, not to be like a dickhead, like, oh, I'm not taking your recommendations, fuck off. But like, you know, you constantly, everyone, you get recommended films, shows, podcasts, whatever, and you're like, oh yeah, I'll check it out. And it just adds to a list of shit that you never check out, which is the only reason I say don't, um, you know, recommend stuff because it will just add on to my list of stuff that I might, maybe should well check out, but likely won't. Um, but yeah, I just ultimately, because all of them, you know, they're in show business. That's so all they do is talk about being in show business and buying expensive things and houses and hanging out with celebrities and dining in restaurants. And I'm just like, what the fuck happened? Like comedy used to be, I mean, it was always a show business thing, but it's like the best comedy is, you know, the underdog. That's what what's good. That's what's funny. That's what makes films good and funny is the underdog. That's what makes comedy good is when the person is like the underdog. But now they're all fucking millionaires and celebrities getting on stage talking about being millionaires and celebrities and it's like well there's nothing to fucking grow well so i mean and that's i'm trying in general in my life in general to be more positive and and stuff you know i've i've mentioned that i'm on my positivity kick i'm on my way up pulling myself out of my fucking or trying to pull myself out of my depression or fuck, whatever you want to call it my gay pulling myself out of my gay with a nice big of my penis um all right with all the gay talk ewan jesus get a bit of it now again now, now again now and again in your funny funny videos but you know you're on one today with the gay shit ewan. calm down um i don't mean anything by it other than i mean i mean gay shit by it uh, the so so in being positive what i found is i mentioned briefly a while ago the nine club as a something I'm, i've been watching a lot lately um because i've been coming to terms with being very much a fan of skateboarding as opposed to a skater because it used to be that, like i didn't shy away from you know skateboard media and stuff but it didn't hold much interest to me because i was sort of like well, you know, it's cool and all, but I can't really skate anymore. Yeah, I'm sure I could if I tried. And you know, I hope to at least have a get a board sometime and you want to wheel around on it. But, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a skater currently, you know. I, I'm, those days are sort of have passed me by. Um, but I've come to terms with that now, and I'm actually really enjoying just being a fan of skateboarding like just watching it and being interested in it um and with the nine club um and maybe there are other uh you know skateboarding podcasts and things out there but at the moment I've, I've just been focusing on the nine club that's the one i found and it's good and i like it and it's just some skaters um you know they're pros they've all got their own things going on but they get together every week and they do their show where they you know, they hang out, they talk to each other about what's going on. Um, but pretty much it's all just skateboarding. They watch n new skate videos that are coming out um, that week and, you know, talk about the clips and the skateboarders and skate news and which pros are doing what, you know, who's on what team and stuff. Um, and I, I guess it's a, it's a similar way to, like, being a regular sports fan, except not being a massive cock. <laughs> because... I don't sit there and then go, oh, yeah, did you see the tricks we did? We did a fucking backside 360 off the fucking ledge and a, you know, backsmith to fake you down the rail. Oh, it was great. We did that. Like, no, this guy did that. <laughs> and I appreciate it for what it is, for the fucking the sport of it, the hobby of it, the fucking art of it. Um, Rather than saying I, I've got a team I follow and if you're not on my team then you're against me and 
I take some weird credit for the, you know, the, the the goals that my team has scored. Like a fucking maniac, an absolute cunt. Which is what I'm saying, basically, is, is in general, sports fans are cunts. Um, prove me wrong. Go on, prove me wrong. But skateboarding, because, you know, it's, skateboarding's always been, like, a cool thing in that respect. That it's it's not just a regular sport. It's, it's like a creative pursuit. Um, and you can be a good skateboarder without being, like, the best fucking skateboarder in the world. Like, if someone's doing small little mellow tricks on curbs and stuff, you can be really impressed by it. And then if someone's jumping down fucking 20 sets of stairs or jumping off rooftops and stuff, you can be impressed by it in that way as well. There's, there's like, so much to it. And just and to have people just talking about it, that and you see, as, as they talk about it, it, there's genuine enjoyment in their conversations and in their interactions with each other. Just enjoying skateboarding for what it is um and also there's a lot less there's no like politics and news and stuff because i've been watching um a few of those recently which i really need to stop and i'm, I'm i've been trying to stop a few things i've stopped using the explore page on instagram like just i used to browse it just forever and ever and you know one out of every million pictures might be interesting and I'll, i'd save it or whatever maybe share it with somebody but I've, I've flat out just stopped going on there. A couple of times I've hit the button to go on the explore page, but then I've been like, oh, no, 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 get off. Because it's all just, not evil, but it's there's just nothing really wholesome on there. It's all just shit and it's adverts and it's TikToks and fucking the art that's shown on, on that page in general. You know, you might see a good thing now and again, but in general, the art that they share on like the explore page is just fucking garbage, like popular gimmicky shit art and so i've tried following more skateboarders and stuff on instagram to you know fill my feed with that um but you know like on youtube just to pass time not because i'm really really interested in it i've been watching um you know quite a few like left-leaning political slash news satire commentary channel people which, you know, because they look at the dumb fucking, you know, right-wing people and comment on them and make fun of them. And I, I like and appreciate that. But the more I watch, the more angry I get at the state of the world. And I, like, to the point of being more depressed after watching these videos than I was before. Like, I watch them for some sort of light entertainment while I have dinner or whatever. And I come away from it just feeling so fucking grim, just like, ugh, like that's actually what's happening in the world. And, you know, I say actually, it's it's one person's view, depending on who you're watching or whatever. But regardless, what they're talking about, regardless of their view on it, is what's happening in the world. Um, and it's just, it's so fucking depressing. And it's the same thing, like I've stopped listening to sort of sad music. And I've like a load of songs in my sort of playlists and things. Um, a load of songs I really, really genuinely like and care for, I guess would be could be considered sad songs. But I just I don't listen to them anymore because it I'm trying, really fucking trying to cultivate like a, a more positive outlook. Um, which, you know, some days is much, much harder than others. But I'm, yeah, I'm fucking trying. And I think it's working in general. I think I'm I'm having better results. I'm feeling a bit better about myself. But I can only do that by <laughs> blanking out everything that's currently happening in the world with just, you know, everyone in charge. All the people who can help, all the rich people, fucking celebrities and sports stars and musicians, billionaires, all these people, comedians, whoever else can help and just don't every day they just refuse to help and even now i'm like i'm getting bummed out and it's like i don't want to i'm not going to talk about that and that's why i appreciate just watching a podcast of skateboarding just people talking about skateboarding i love skateboarding always have i loved doing it when i did it and now i love just being a fan of it and just being interested in it and now for the first time in fucking 
years and years and years and years and years, I'm learning about like the current skateboarding scene, like the current professionals that are out there, new people who are coming up and getting sponsored, videos that are out. You know, I follow Instagram pages of, of some of them and see new clips coming out and stuff. And it's 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 good, man. It's better for your soul to follow something like that. You know, art is cool. I follow artists, obviously, that's like a given. But it's, I guess with art, because I'm so involved with art, because that's what I do for a living now, it's almost like... I need something else to to look at that isn't art because otherwise all I fucking do is look at art. Which, you know, you can argue is good or bad depending on, on where you're at, I guess. But So skateboarding, for me at the moment, is a really, like, good thing. It's a positive thing. Just an interest in it. Watching it, enjoying it. Having my din-dins. Maybe a hot chocolate in the morning. I've been eating more fruit and stuff, so I have like an apple and a, a really small hot chocolate, water-based, and make it fairly rich, but not too rich. Just to be like, because portion control, you know, as I've said, I, I've been losing weight and, and trying to, you know, stay healthy and, and get in better shape. Um, portion control is something I've been really working on because... You know, if I make a plate of like fries and chicken nuggets or something, I just pile it up and eat as much as I can. And I hate wasting food, so I'd eat it even if I, I'm past to the point where I'm not hungry anymore. I'd eat it anyway just to finish, you know, to clean the plate, to finish the portion. So now I'm like, right, if I sort that shit out, I don't need an enormous... I've got this Hulk mug that's not huge, but it's big, um, of hot chocolate full to the top, and, you know, made with milk and expensive Belgian hot chocolate or whatever. Um, I don't need that. Like, it's it's nice to have a big fucking hot chocolate, but I don't need it. So have an apple, a nice sweet pink lady apple, um, a little hot chocolate, just so you get like the flavour of hot chocolate and you feel like you have had a hot chocolate without drinking a fucking litre of the stuff. Um... And then watch some skateboarding with that and just go, hey, cool, he did the thing. He did the trick, he landed it. And then you see some bales and you're like, oh, <laughs> I forgot about that part. <laughs> Which sometimes I genuinely do forget that like that happens. I spend so much time watching cool skate clips and every now and again you see a bale and you're like, oh, shit. And, you know, on the Nine Club, for instance, I, I first found the Nine Club through um, the interviews they do. They have on... Um, all kinds of pros. They've had, you know, Tony Hawk, Chad Musker, like loads of, like the Tony Hawk video game era of pros, but also loads more current ones, younger ones and stuff. Um, like it, it spreads, you know, it spreads, it, it spans the generations of skateboarding, which is really cool to see. So that's how I first found them, by being like, oh, they're interviewing this person or this person, I'll watch. And then you start going, oh, they I quite like, you know, how these guys interact with each other, I like the, uh, you know, discussions they have, I'll watch a few more of their videos, and then you just sort of get hooked, and keep on watching and watching and watching. Um, I don't know where that was going. I really don't know where that was going. <laughs> but yeah, you know, bales, you forget that people actually do fall off their skateboards. Um, <laughs> uh, imagine being that stupid that you don't realise people fall off their skateboard sometimes. Fucking idiot, you know. Fucking idiot. What a fucking moron. But uh, there, there is, I had this thing noted down that I wanted to talk about that I remember from my past, from my skateboarding days. Um, which, you know, it, originally it was just like one of the coolest things I'd ever seen ever. But now, now I'm older, a bit more mature, and I'm on this new path in life or whatever. Um, I can appreciate it as a an inspirational thing as well as just a fucking cool thing. So this the, one of the best things I ever saw was a guy with no legs below the knee skateboarding. So he had, um, if this is his willy and that's his legs... If this is his knee, he has like that. 
So he has the knee joint and he can bend this bit of his leg. But then he had like none of this. And so he had these really thick socks that he'd pull up and they were all like bunched up here wearing shorts. These thick socks so he could be on his grip tape on, on his knees on these bits. Um, and then push along with his hands and he was doing all kinds of tricks like flipping the jumping doing almost a hand plant and then flipping the board underneath him and landing back on it um and you know there's quite a few videos out there like that currently there's blind skateboarders you know skaters with no legs and stuff but i was fuck it, maybe 13 14 years old never conceived of seeing something like this and it was just at my local skate park this guy just happened by and he was maybe like 18 um, and then I never saw him again. So I, I don't know if he was just visiting or stopping by or something. Um, but it was really fucking impressive. But then the most impressive thing was, um, the skate park, there was like a, a building site near it. So there was loads of junk around and there was a door there at one point. So we had the door up on its side. I just draw my hand. Um, so we had a door. This is the ground. There's like a basketball court next to the skate park. So we're in the basketball court with a door on its side, like this door handle. Um, and you know, the people who could were like jumping over it, doing ollies, flips, whatever. I wasn't because I wasn't that good. Um, but then this kid with no legs pushes along on his board, hand plants, vaults over the door with his board in hand and lands on his knees on the board and rolls away. I was fucking blown away. And this was before smartphones were really a thing. Um, maybe like just before like camera phones and stuff were coming in. So nobody happened to get it on video. It wasn't like, oh shit, let me get, get this on my iPhone or whatever. So it was just one of those things almost lost to the ages of just a fucking cool thing that happened. Basketball hoops. Fucking skaters all stood around. This guy with no legs pushes along on his knees, hand plant here, vault, and I think he did like a 180 or a 360 or something over the, this door on its side. And you know, a door on its side is maybe this big to a, a, a teenager, a slender man teenager. So it's not, not easy to just jump over a fucking door on its side. But that was, so that's, that's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my whole entire existence uh, was that fucking thing. Um, and, you know, try and beat that. <laughs> that's, that's fucking cool. And also, like I say, nowadays, that's inspirational. Like, you get so bogged down in, you know, depression or whatever, or oh, I've got to do this and I've got these responsibilities and I'm fucked if I don't do this. And I go, oh, oh, oh. And, you know, the easy thing to say is, yeah, well, there's people out there with no legs and they carry on. Obviously, it's not fair to, to judge anyone based on anyone else's trials. Like, you just can't do that. You can't... Like when people say, oh, you know, there's people starving in Africa. It's like, yeah, OK, but I'm here in this place with these problems. Like, you all have your own problems. So someone not having legs doesn't make... <laughs> your problems less valid and somebody with no legs excelling in these incredible ways shouldn't shame you for not excelling in, in any kind of way because everyone works differently but regardless that was fucking cool to see a kid with no legs skateboarding in my local skate park out of nowhere and vault over a fucking door on its side i mean if i say a door you think a door standing up like it, which wasn't the case that'd be fucking incredible to see but it just wasn't what happened at that particular time oh sorry to put a stop to the action for a moment but i'd like to talk about one of our sponsors boy pads pads for the boys what the hell are you talking about i'm talking about boy pads sanitary pads but for the boys see this one's got an oozy pistol on it this one's got a fucking skull with like blood and shit you know, boy stuff. All right, guys, listen up. I know you know what I'm talking about. When I talk about you, you go, you go to have a wee, 
and is there's fucking is piss leakage, leaky little cock syndrome. After you've peed, you're shaking, you're shaking, you fucking shake. Give it a bit, and you think, okay, done, no more piss. Back into the pants it goes, and then all the piss comes out everywhere, drippity drip drops. Now your underwear's wet and it's uncomfortable. That's why you've got boy pads. See, it's not just for girls. Fuck the feminists. Men can, that's huge. That's enormous. Think how much piss that shit can absorb. It's easy. You fucking, does it stick? Yeah, you peel it off. You fucking, you put that in your, in your underwear, like so. And now, I'm peeing right now, and it's all absorbed. The day is saved. I don't have to change my underwear for days at a time. Now, it's brilliant. Boy pads, boy pads. Mmm, scented. Go to boypads.co.fucking piss, whatever. Give a shit. Thanks to our sponsors, boy pads. For you! Let's take a look at a comic book of Metal Gear Solid by Ashley Wood. I forgot I fucking had this completely blank out of my head. And then I was looking through the lower kitchen cupboards in my tiny, tiny home. Um, where I have bags, a couple of recycling bags full of old comics. And this was in there and I completely forgot. Um, and it, I found it shortly after I did my Ashley Wood art video. Um, which is pretty fucking annoying. I, I left this out, but then I had a zillion books by him anyway, so it wasn't really too much of an issue. But yeah, I just thought um, I'd pull it out. So it's volume two, so I fuck knows about volume one. But it's Metal Gear Solid: Sons of Liberty. So you know, if you played the game, you know. Actually, I really enjoyed the Metal Gear Solid one and two. This one being two was really really good. Obviously, I know there are older games. I know the history, but PlayStation Metal Gear Solid one. Brilliant, classic in its own right. Sons of Liberty, classic in its own right. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that. I also saw the making of DVD that came with the special edition I had. Um, and that was really, really fucking cool. Seeing some like the concept sketches and notebooks and stuff in that was really, really cool. Um, Metal Gear Solid 3 was cool in parts. Um, but then that, then it started getting more into like the survival aspect of it and you have to eat and stuff and that's for me games like that they're just too much um like far cry i tried playing i think it was far cry 3 and there was just too much shit to do of like hunting and gathering and collecting stuff to build pouches to carry more shit and then combining shit to make more shit and like like I'm, I'm a very, very casual video gamer. Like, give me an axe and a bunch of people to hit with the axe, and I'm good. Machine gun, I'll run in, shoot the fuck out of everyone, and I'm good. But then, when it comes to make sure you're eating regularly, make sure you keeping, you know, an eye on this and that, and combine these items to make more items so that you can get this upgrade, so you can do this and that, and you know, my friend Sam, he's like a thorough gamer, and he plays games that are like that, like really. Not labor intensive, but like attention intensive almost. Like you have to be in, like thoroughly involved with it, um, which is cool. You know, I, I like and appreciate that. But personally, so that's where Metal Gear Solid 3 for me got a little bit too much into that. Not well, that it started getting into that. Um, so it wasn't as enjoyable for me, but a fun enough game to play. And then that's where my. Metal Gear Solid experience stopped. So I, I I know of the lore and stuff of it all, um, to a point. Revolver Ocelot, Ry Raiden or Raiden? I forget which what they call him. Oh, I know all about Metal Gear Solid, however you pronounce his name. I just know it's the, spelt the same as the Mortal Kombat character, and I forget which one's pronounced which way. I guess he's Raiden, isn't he? And then Raiden is in Mortal Kombat. Um, so yeah, Ashley Wood. His art in this, he, he did this around the same time as um, Zombies vs. Robots. So it, the art feels very much in that kind of, you know, Ashley Wood comic style, but also specifically Ashley Wood Zombies vs. Robots sort of style. 
um, and the newer Tank Girls he was working on at the si- at the time as well. Um, oh, and there's some some fucking art news, podcast news. Pew, 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 pew. I saw on um, Ashley Wood's Instagram page he was collecting a bunch of uh, all the the original artwork for Zombies vs Robots because apparently it's been uh, 15 years since it came out and they're putting together like a big hardback book, I guess of the comic and art to go with it and stuff and it's really cool to see um something ashley wood does which i do also but not because of him but sort of somewhere parallel to him and how he works and how i work is doing comic book pages on just scraps of paper um you know with torn edges and perforated sides and stuff um and he said in this post that like that's just how we work. Just quickly get the comic pages done. It doesn't need to be on a fucking grand format or anything, as long as you get them done, and then it's the final product that counts. Um, so I had a brief flick through this earlier. Um, oh, so I'm looking forward to that book. I'm, I'm going to do my best to get hold of a copy, and then I'll show it off in a podcast. Um, I, th- f- for me personally, I don't think his art style lends itself very well to the Metal Gear Solid universe or story. I think, because it's really good for for fast-paced action and just quick, like, you know, all of this, you can see it's drawn quickly. It's got an energy to it. But for something like Metal Gear Solid, which is so like, in terms of visuals, not always, but it's in general, it's, it's quite lush. Like, there's a lot to it. Like, all the costumes and stuff and the background elements, the, the Metal Gear, you know, robots and everything. Not that a comic of that would have to be so detailed to, to really encapsulate it all properly, but I just feel, having flicked through this, I'm sure the story's told well. I've not read it, because why would I? But I don't... Flicking through this, I don't get a vibe in general of Metal Gear Solid um, from this artwork, which is a bit of a shame. And, you know, maybe that's good because it is different. It's not just an obvious Metal Gear Solid comic because, you know, there's enough, like, movie and video game tie-in graphic novels that are just shit. So it's really cool that this is so different from, you know, something like that. You you know, typical pencil, ink, digital colour, cool, it's a comic book. It looks different, which is cool. But in terms of it being Metal Gear Solid, there was a couple of pages. I, you know, I see if I can find them. Yeah, stuff like this. It's almost, um, it's almost too abstract. Like you can see what's going on. It's Solid Snake. He's got a bazooka, a rocket launcher, and there's faces. But there's, it's just sort of. I don't want to say too messy because it's not necessarily messy. It's, I don't know, maybe too arty to be a real cunt and use a term like that. Like, it's cool artwork, it's cool drawings. I love how obviously quick they are. I love the energy that I've said before. I like the, the, you know, the, the grit of it, how it is quite dirty looking and the tones and the digital aspect he adds into the drawings. I like the vibe of the comic in general, but I'm just saying in terms of an adaption of Metal Gear Solid, for me personally, in my opinion, this doesn't really work art-wise, maybe. Parts of it I do like, but I just think if, if I'd learned there was a really, really fucking killer artist they'd got to do a Metal Gear Solid graphic novel when I picked it up I think I'd expect something a little bit more maybe not that it needs to be fucking lavishly painted and painstakingly inked and detailed but like you know I think I just want a bit more and like I say for zombies versus robots it really works for one thing it's an original um, story and you know property I guess um, but it, it fits the world of it being so rough and ready and it's post-apocalyptic and it's sketchy and harsh 
and there's you know zombies running and there's mess and brains and shit so having that kind of art style especially when there's a mass of zombies you know jumping on top of a robot it makes sense to be abstract because in that situation if you were watching it it would almost be abstract it would look like a fucking swarm of insects on a thing and you can't really make out individual forms it's just stuff happening so it makes sense for the action to be almost lost in the drawings but then for something like Metal Gear Solid which is very specific like the storytelling however over the top it might be um, is very specific um, the details are specific so to have the art be as loose as it is almost and uh, there's this that's me sitting here complaining going oh i don't know oh shit why don't they do it better oh you should do it better i don't know what you're doing that for it's just i like the artwork in on its own it's cool stylish and quick and rough and ready it's got texture to it but i just think I own, the only reason I have this book is because it's Ashley Wood. If it was any other artist and the artwork looked sort of like this, I probably would have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, so, <laughs> let's be positive. Um, I'll tell you what. I won't actually look at it, but do you know what's cool? This. <gasps> this is the proof copy. I know if, if you're on my Patreon, you've already seen it. And by now... Um, if, if this is going out two weeks later after Patreon, the book might actually be out. But this is the full... This is better than Ashley Wood's <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. Um, whatever. This is the new format now. <laughs> Do you like my animation? My little animated intro. I was really happy with that. Um... Obviously, the, the whole Ewan Untitled slash Ewan Cunt thing is a little something I've shown that I had the idea for before. So it was really cool to actually have a little go at animating that. Um, and it wasn't, I was about to say, and that was enough of a pain in the arse to animate. It really, it wasn't a pain in the arse. It just, it took a little while even to animate something that small, which I'm aware that's what animation is. It's a pain in the arse and it takes forever and it's like part of me wants to say well now I've gotten a taste for it I could do more with animation I could put more effort in and do more with it get more done but at the same time I'm like I, I don't know <laughs> just painting a scribbly line and the letter C painting animating a scribbly line and the letter C I can manage that and that was like 50 like 52 frames total just for that because I wanted it to look smooth um, so I don't know if I'll be doing <laughs> a shitload of animation I'm losing my voice my caffeine's wearing off uh, <laughs> Jesus. but I like that as a as a layout looking at it in the in the recording device that's yeah, pretty cool. I hope you're all well. I hope you enjoyed the burger party. I hope you're all, you know, alive enough to actually watch <laughs> this shit. Uh, you know, positive, positive, positive. That's what we're doing. We're being positive. New year, new me. No, but seriously, I am trying to be like. Not necessarily a more positive person, but more positive about and towards myself, I guess. Um, I just, especially this last week, I've had loads of moments of like, just really can't be fucked to do anything. And I think some of that is to do with, you know, the media I've been watching and stuff. And like, it's getting harder to pull myself up out of those. But there have been times where I've I've, I've been like, fuck, I, I'm not getting anything done. I've got no motivation. I'm just so fucking, I'm just sad and I can't get anything done. Wee, wee. Um, and there was at least one point, um, I think last week, 
But that happened, and I could feel it happening. And I was I was so just annoyed with myself that it was happening. Um, but I forced myself up. And I was like, right, just fucking do something. And I got up. I went out, bought some Dr. Pepper, just for a little, like, feel-good boost of, like, just something nice that I liked. I had some cool music on. I played skate for a bit. And it worked. You know, I wasn't suddenly happy, and I, everything's fine. But... I was in a much better mood after that. So I think it's important to, to take time to address when you're feeling like that, to try not to wallow in it. And that's like, that's what I used to do. I'd put on sad music, good music. I liked the songs. I wasn't trying to be like, oh, I'm so depressed, but I'd be like, well, this is how I'm feeling. So this is what I'm going to listen to. And it just, it's best to address the feeling as, as it comes and go, okay, right, what am I feeling? What can I do about it? You know, the old Ewan would never have said that. Jesus, what a fucking sap this new Ewan's turning into. What a fucking, oh, I'm going to start talking about manifesting shit soon. You wait, you wait and see. 2021, 2022 Ewan. Oh, we're manifesting good things. Let's buy some crystals and do some yoga. I'm eating fruit. Surely yoga's right down the fucking road, innit? Oh, that'll be next. Oh, check out my yoga fucking workout routine. Oh, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Didn't that just blow the shit out of your mind? New show. New things happening, going on. Stuff, things. We've got sponsors again. We're big time now. We'll have guests. Maybe. See if I get someone to talk to. Whoa! It's really hard to keep up this energy for more than a minute at a time. Whoa! Ah!